while it's chaos down there there's at least four boats waiting to go down through the lock another three or four waiting to come up um, and of course there's the uh, the lift bridge just before it so there's really no point of me setting off just yet um, but uh, I've got to say really nice moorings in the middle of Banbury and then all 14 day as well it seems so um, yeah it's pretty amazing really In this action-packed episode, you can see what I get up to with my barge pole. We find out what happens when a lock balance beam breaks. We witness the antics of the local wildlife. Have a relaxing cruise along one of the most stunning bits of canal I've been on. And I cruise through Gibraltar and find myself unwelcome in Oxford. Now this looks like it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze. Breathe in. Happy days indeed. Right, let's see what the score is at the lock. There were still two boats waiting to descend the lock and a pull in next to the water point. Yeah, well, I was, I was just about to set off and then one boat went past and then another one went past and then another one, so I just went and put the kettle on. <laughs> now, these people are part of the CRT management team on a day out to find out what it's like on the shop floor. They've been helping boats through the lock. Oi, hang on, what about me? Looks like I'll have to do it on my own then. Three boats waiting to go up. This family, who are viewers, had the same idea as me. There aren't really any shops between Banbury and the outskirts of Oxford, so time to stock up at the supermarket by Bridge 168. Yep, there I go, and I've left the camera on the boat and running. What a dafty! between that and this, I would choose this every time. Another derelict Lockie's cottage at Grant's Lock. And fortunately for me, another boater is on hand to send me through the lock. Lots of CRT work going on in the Oxford, just passing a dredger and some collapsed towpath. This is King Sutton Lock, very pretty lock with uh, lovely little honey coloured stone lock keeper's cottage and a very nice bridge behind the lock too. Very nice indeed. Also known as Tarver's Lock it seems. There's a lift bridge coming up, it's called Scooby's Lift Bridge. Oh, Scooby Snacks! <laughs> oh, Shaggy! Hello, Doc.
It's far too hot today. I just want to whinge about it. This is a very pretty stretch of canal. Very nice. Very nice. Most of the lift bridges, uh, they're not windless operated, they're just counterbalanced and left open. That's why they've got chains and ropes hanging from them, so someone can lower them from the towpath side. It does seem a bit dodgy going underneath them, I've got to say. Little did I know it, but those were prophetic words. There's another two magpies. Must be my lucky day. More CRT works with a dredging barge. Are these called joeys? I'm not sure. Just strapping in before Nell's Bridge Lock. The lock will take me down onto a stretch of the canal with varying water levels. Quite a restricted headroom on the bridge just below, and you have to check um, what the water level is down below before you go through. You seem to be all right today. You can see the water level marker on the right. If the river level is high, you might not have enough room to get under the bridge. Always worth checking first. The River Cherwell crosses the canal from the left and into Aino Weir on the right. If the river is in flood, this section can be quite difficult to navigate. Phil from Narrowboat Journeys has some good footage of this and I'll link it in the description box. Now you'll notice this lock is a rather odd shape. It's actually wide enough for two boats, but the drop is fairly insignificant. The next lock down is Somerton Deep Lock, and so this lock needs to put more water into the pound to feed Somerton Lock. And here we have Belcher's Bridge. Uh. Excuse me. I know. Schoolboy humour, as my mum would have said. What an excellent morning's cruising I've had. It's just been one of those days where it's just absolutely you know everything clicks into place it's just been wonderful I mean the moment I opened the stern doors this morning the first thing I saw was a kingfisher jump from its perch and dive into the water and come out with a fish I mean that is just magical that's a magical start to the day and um, and yeah it just well I wouldn't say it got better and better because how can you beat that what a sight but really just um, I've, I've cruised along the canal, I've seen so many beautiful things, so many beautiful flowers. I've saw swarms and swarms of common blue damselflies. Um, I've never seen swarms of them before, they were just stunning, you know. And one of the things I like so much about, about this lifestyle is that it brings you so close to nature, you know. And continuing my journey along the canal, I just came across various things that uh, I hadn't come across before, um, like that 
rather strange weir and uh, uh, an Aino lock which was quite different to anything I've come across before um, and I've had a chat to some lovely people this morning um, and, it's, and look I've just ended up at this absolutely fabulous mooring absolutely lovely um, I feel blessed today I think I'm gonna stay here a few days actually it's great So, what happens when a lock balance beam breaks, like this one clearly has? Uh, it was reported a few days ago that this was actually sort of dragging along the, uh, uh, along the ground. Um, it's obviously kind of rotted through. Uh, they're, they're supposed to last about 25 years, I guess. Um, and this one, well, who knows how long it's uh, made it till the CRT have come along and uh, sawn the whole thing off and they've been operating the locks for the past few days using ropes but yesterday they've come up with a new temporary solution which is a bit of a shame because I wanted to go through the lock and film them sort of opening the gate with ropes that would have been really quite interesting and here is the new solution but now I'm sure this probably doesn't have the correct balance weight but it's probably an awful lot better to use than ropes by the time you come through Dashwood Locks, it will be sorted properly. Easy does it. It's a bit precarious. Did you know this is where the expression put your back into it comes from? This section of the South Oxford Canal between Northbrook Lock and Pigeon Lock is one of the loveliest sections of canal I've ever had the pleasure to cruise down. So I've posted a completely unedited version for my patrons on my Patreon page.
Here we are, coming into Gibraltar. No rock and no monkeys. Once through Baker's Lock, the Oxford Canal enters the River Cherwell again. Another lozenge-shaped lock. And there's a boat behind me, so we share the lock. And I wait, and I wait, and I wait. Thrupp was incredibly busy and it was difficult finding anywhere to moor. It was a very pretty village though. Half a mile later and there's space for me to pull in. I read this book during lockdown. It wasn't very good. It's actually set in Thrupp or much of it is set in Thrupp which is where I am now and it's quite common to find books um, in the facilities areas in uh, in places like this um, either in the, the toilet or the shower block so I thought I would go and donate this one well it seems this place actually has a library here which is pretty amazing let me know if you got this book in Thrupp entering Duke's Lock now on the outskirts of Oxford Nineteen thirty three. Help. Thank you. Organised chaos. Sorry? Organised chaos. Duke's Cut is on the right, one of the two access points to the River Thames. A lot of young people live on the boats here as house prices and rentals are ludicrously expensive in Oxford. There were no residential moorings and little in the way of facilities for these boaters and it seems to me they've been pushed to the edge of the city and marginalised. You'd think a city like Oxford would pride itself on equality and diversity. I love this, a narrowboat with a stage for music and performance. Brilliant! Now, remember what I said earlier about these counterbalanced lift bridges? Perry's lift bridge doesn't want to play ball. In the well, time to put my pole to use. What does CRT stand for? Yep, cycle and running track. I know there are a lot of bikes in Oxford, but personally, I think this money would be better spent on facilities or mooring rather than tarmacking the towpath. Nice boat. 
and this one looks like a humpback whale. I moored on pins as there are no rings or piling in Oxford. I was next to Frenchay Road Bridge for a couple of days. Have a look at the mural on the left. Yes, this is a painting using aerosol sprays by Richard Wilson. Stunning! See, someone else not happy with the moorings either. Mm -hmm. 